hearts, not eyeballs. This book will change your creative life. Whether you are a writer, video editor, artist, or you're building a company, you need to share your work online. I have been scared of doing this for years, and this book helped change my mind and is the reason you're watching this YouTube video right now. Thanks for tuning in. In this video, you're gonna learn why you need to share your work, how to do it, and what you should be sharing online. The first lesson from this book is that we have to face our fears. So me recording these YouTube videos, putting out information and sharing a lot about myself, the business, about writing, is ultimately facing my fears. And what held me back from this for a long time was of course, judgment, you know, you fear the judgment from friends, family, for me personally, not so much from strangers, um, but those are the people individually, you know, that know you well, and you worry what they might think about some of the things that you share online, but ultimately you have to shed the fear of that judgment and push ahead and get your work out there in order to receive all the benefits that will come from sharing what you're doing. Austin puts this really well where he uses, of course, the classic term of the starving artist. And he says, really the only way to stop being a starving artist and to move past that is, of course, to build an audience. You know, build an audience of people that know you, know your services, know your products, know what you do, and will, of course, then go ahead and buy from you. So how do you go about building this audience? Well, the second thing that Austin recommends is contributing to the scene. So don't become a spammer. Don't just spam out information about yourself. You have to contribute in a meaningful way. And the example from our perspective is the YouTube videos that I've been creating are there to help writers, authors, you know, and people online now with business and some of the other videos and things that I've spoken about. And it's me giving, you know, there's no expectation of return either. I'm just contributing to the scene. I'm teaching items or things that I know well. And then of course, that is my contribution and how I've been building an audience. And the same can be said, even if you're on Twitter, uh, we we'll use that as an example. You don't want to just be posting all the time. You want to actually be responding to questions or jumping in on topics and participating in the discussion. It can't be all one way. It's very much a two way street when you're sharing online. The third recommendation that Austin has is that amateurs actually hold the advantage online when you're sharing your work. A good illustration of this is I used to play tennis when I was younger and I played from the age of five and I even played semi-professionally so at a high standard. And sometimes people will come up to me and they'll say, hey Patrick, can you teach me to serve? And because it's been so long since I first learned that skill, it's actually really hard for me to go back and think of a time and explain that motion from ground zero. If someone else who was really good came to me and said, what's wrong with my serve? I could say, oh, you need to you know, adjust where you're standing or maybe raise your racket slightly. You know, I could make some adjustments, but it's hard for me to think back to being a complete amateur. And so amateurs hold the advantage online because you just learned something. You know, this video right here, I've just read this book. So the ideas from the book are fresh. And that's really the key point that he mentions in that section is that learn, you know, teach as you learn. So this is the perfect time, learn something, put it out online straight away. Another big point that Austin raises is something called the daily dispatch. Make sure that you share something every single day. It can be really small, it can be big, but the important thing is to make sure that you're putting something out there every single day. And a lot of people get stuck here because they say, well, what can I share? You know, my life's not that interesting. A good example is the other day I was at this point, I was thinking, what can I put out today? And I happened to see people were putting up this little trending video on Instagram and it was just show me something that, you know, you spent a lot of money on and you don't regret it at all because it's absolutely fantastic. So it was a 10 second video clip. I just filmed a video clip of this right in the studio and 
it went you know viral it got thousands and thousands of views and that was just a really quick thing so there's always something you can share and you just have to look for those things if you're in the early stages of a project then here are a couple of suggestions to help you get started share your influences you could share what's inspiring you at the moment and you could even share what resources you're using to learn the craft or the skill or you know that's helping you with the project that you're currently working on if you're in the middle then talk about you know what are you currently working on right now what methods are you working with what are you stuck you know where have you got stuck what's frustrating you what's proving difficult about the project or the book that you're writing at the moment what have you learned recently what have you completed on the project so far and if you're coming to the end of a project well then of course show the finished product and he talks about sharing scraps from the cutting room floor so you know what did you learn along the way uh, as you were building this project or as you were writing this book things like that and a point that he makes is by sharing what you're doing you're giving people the bloopers you know that you're giving them the bloopers reel before the film gets to the cinema you know you're showing them these little insider tips before it's out there and people really want to see that because you know as they say people always want to see how the sausage gets made that's the classic cliche they want to know how did this project business book get from a to b and how do you get that information out there? Well, it can really be anything. It can be a tweet, it can be a YouTube video, a Facebook post, a LinkedIn post. It really doesn't matter the platform that you choose. It's just important that you get things out there. And I would caveat that, that by saying, do try and make sure the platform is relevant to your audience. So of course, you know, when it comes to writing, for example, you would maybe lean more towards Twitter because that just tends to be that kind of, you know, fits with that audience. If it's photography or video, you're probably gonna choose Instagram or of course YouTube, things like that. And the other thing he mentions is Sturgeon Law, where, you know, the vast majority of the content you put out there is probably gonna be crap, you know. We produce, you know, I've been producing a lot of these YouTube videos and it's not so much that it's crap, it's often that you, you know, I might think, oh, that video was great and I think people are really gonna be interested in that and a few people ask me that question, so I think that video is gonna do well and then it can flop. And then sometimes I'll maybe create a video where, oh, one person asked me this question, yeah, it's quite interesting, but I'll put it out and then that one ends up being really popular. By consistently putting content out there, you'll find your flow and you will find things within that that then resonate with your audience. Another one of my favorite lessons from the book is the so what test. So anything that you create, you write, you record, is before you put it out there, think, so what, right? Does this matter? Is this important? For me, when I was a kid, I used to have this annoying phrase where I would say, so what, who cares, when I was a, you know, a stroppy teenager. But I use that same test when I write anything or create anything. Now I think to myself, well, so what? You know, who cares about this? And if I can say, oh, this is what's important from it and this is why people care, then I will share that, you know, and put it out there. The other major takeaway from this book is the share your trade secrets. So it's something I've been really reluctant to do. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, judgment has probably held me back from you know, putting videos out there and putting content out there, but also it's really terrifying to share your trade secrets. For me, I suppose lifting the veil on how I built this business comes with concern that someone else will rush in and try and copy the same thing. And Austin, of course, talks a lot about how this fear is perfectly valid, but the fact is that if you've been doing something for, you know, 10 years, then someone can hear how you've done it, but it's still going to take them a long time to get to that level. For example, you could give me a book written by Gordon Ramsay and leave me in the kitchen to try and produce something that tastes as good. And whilst I would have the list of ingredients and I would have the method to cook it, I can tell you now, and I'm sure my fiance would back this up, it won't taste anything like 
uh, the dish if Gordon Ramsay had cooked it. You know, there would still be this massive gap between what I cooked and what Gordon Ramsay would be able to cook. And that's a good illustration of, you know, how chefs will share their trade secrets in these cookbooks, but we still, despite having that, can't cook at the same level that they can. The other lesson from Austin is that you want hearts and not eyeballs. So you want people to care and people to be invested in the content and in your journey. So it's not just enough to get people viewing your content. You could have loads of followers, loads of views, but if people don't care, they're not invested, then it's not going to affect them in any way. And then they're ultimately not going to really follow along and potentially, you know, in the future buy product services um, or just even watch or read more of your content. He also talks a lot about, you know, do they ultimately give a crap about what you're saying, what you're doing, what you're showing. And if they don't, he says, well, maybe you need to make yourself a more interesting person, which, <laughs> you know, that is incredibly harsh, but I think it's something that we all need to hear. And if people just aren't relating to the content we're producing, then we just need to go away and come up with something that's more interesting, you know? And I take that on board as sometimes, okay, I need to be more interesting. I have to come up with more interesting things. The other important lesson is learn to take a punch, but don't feed the trolls. So he says, you know, accept criticism online, don't run from all criticism. And in these videos on our YouTube, I always say, you know, leave comments, leave feedback. Did you enjoy the video? Uh, is there something else we should have spoken about? Is there another topic? Uh, and I'm open to that kind of criticism. Of course, he says that it can go too far. So where you just get people that are just outright trolls and they're just, you know, saying completely stupid, mean, unnecessary things, then just ignore that, you know, don't get into um, those kind of petty arguments. And, you know, every time I post a video, a certain groups that I'll share it in. And you know, 90% of the comments, people will say really helpful, really useful, really enjoyed the video. And then there'll always be someone that just replies with, you know, oh, don't tell me what to do about writing. I know everything, you're a massive idiot, you know, and they haven't watched the video, they've just made a snap decision. And so those types of trolls and comments, you know, just ignore them. If it's on Facebook, I'll normally just like, like the comment anyway, <laughs> because it's just, okay, whatever, you've got your opinion. So that's what he talks about, is just don't feed those trolls, just forget about it. And another key lesson is sell out. So this is one I think a lot of people struggle with is ultimately they feel like they don't want to sell something to their audience even once they have an audience. We romanticize the starving artist and I know writers in particular do this a lot, but the fact of the matter is life costs money. You know, we have to pay rent, bills, mortgages and simply things as we know are getting more and more expensive all the time. So it's important that we actually charge for the things that we do and the things that we do well. He goes on to talk about how some of our most cherished acts of creativity were actually produced out of pure necessity for money. He uses the example of the Beatles, John Lennon and Paul McCartney have openly said they used to sit down and before they wrote their next song, they would say, okay, today let's write a swimming pool. They were very clear about the fact they were doing it for the money. He also talks about how Mario Puzo wrote The Godfather simply because he was in about $20,000 worth of debt and he needed to create something he could sell and make money from that would get him out of the debt. Those are some examples where creativity was born purely out of necessity for money. The final lesson is don't quit your show. Go away so that you can come back. And I really like this bit of advice because often when you're producing a lot of content, you can get a bit burnt out, particularly if your audience is growing slowly or it just takes a lot of work, you know, producing these videos, coming up with the ideas, recording them, editing them, scheduling them, writing some of the outlines for the videos and then writing descriptions and then sharing them. It's a lot of work that goes into actually producing these videos and you can get burnt out sometimes. So he talks about don't ever quit. It's just if you need a break at some point, then take a break and come back to it when you're ready, you're refreshed and you have more creative ideas to share.
I hope you enjoyed this video all about the lessons I learned from Show Your Work by Austin Kleon. I really think this book is fantastic. It's helped me immensely. Uh, please do like the video if you enjoyed it. Click the subscribe button, turn the notification bell on. Let me know any other books you would like us to feature in our book club.